Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm here on the north shore of Long Island, Cormstead State Park, which I last shot at two years ago. Uh, it's a beautiful park, it's the former uh, estate of a very wealthy family which ceded the, um, the, the property to the state a number of decades ago and it's now a beautiful state park. I'm hoping today to do a, a combination of some captures of uh, woodland, fall foliage, maybe even some, uh, some birding. So I've only just bought two lenses other than the one that I'm shooting on right now, which is a 35. I've got uh, the 24 to 105 to do my landscape stuff and the 100 to 500 to do my uh, bird photography. And that's pretty much it. So hopefully something will pay off in both directions. I've got a possible composition lined up right now. And before the light changes too much, I'm going to take us over there and uh, walk you through it. Basically, this is the fresh pond, which is just a little bit inshore from Long Island Sound. And there's a flock of geese on there. You can probably hear them in the background. Um, I, might, I might get some shots of them too, but um, I'm hoping more for something like sandpipers when I get up to the shore. In any case, let me just take you over to the uh, pond shot and uh, walk you through it. So I have a composition in front of me, but I'm going to take a, a, a different angle on it. And the reason I'm going to take a different angle on it is because what I'm looking at is these trees that are right across from me, as you can see, they're kind of blocked by the, you know, by the overhanging branches of the tree that's, in, that's uh, off to the left and out of frame. It's got branches that are hanging right in front and blocking them away. But what I do see is some interesting reflections right there. So what I think I want to do is frame this up right around there, maybe take a vertical composition. I may do a couple of different versions of it and uh, really kind of just focus on the reflections that you can see right over here. Uh, in fact, what I'm going to do now is turn the polarizer on my lens to try and see if I can get the reflections just a little more distinct, like there, perhaps. Cut some of the glare out and still get, some, uh, get the trees. So I've got a polarizer on right now. What I'm going to do now is switch this camera back into photo mode. And right now I'm setting it, but I'm going to use it by F11, getting my shutter down to about 1 20th of a second. I'm probably going to actually put on an ND filter to try and slow, slow the shutter speed down because there are slight ripples in the water, and while that's going to be okay, oh, here comes some geese. Actually, you could make, I might just forget what I just said, wait for some of the geese to actually get in the shot, and then they'll be part of the, part of the image. So... Thank you, geese, for coming along. I'm gonna take a few as they get into frame. And I'm gonna take a little longer angle of it right there. Oops. And they've gone off. All right. So that was a start. Not the start I expected, but that's the start. So I'm gonna go back now to my original reflection only shot and um, probably turn, probably do this a vertical. And uh, what, I, what you'll see after that will be, well, you'll see the geese shot. I see the geese are starting to come back now, so I better just hurry up and recompose. And you're gonna see what I wind up with, either with or without geese, right now. I wound up working this pond side location for about an hour. And sometimes as a landscape photographer, patience is the best virtue you can have because light can change, the composition can change, different angles can change, and the first photo you take may not be and probably won't be the best one you take.
After I had milked the pond side location for as much as I could get, I hiked about another mile or so until I got to the beach. As you can see, it's a very popular area for people looking to relax and just uh, hang out. And I hoped I could find a decent composition along the shore. So I've arrived at the North Shore. Uh, you can see this is a popular, you know, strolling and hiking area for, you know, for visitors to the park. Um, I don't mind from people in the background, so no worries for me. So I've got to lined up a composition here. As you can see, I've got a, a very low angle for my camera. And the reason for that is because it's going to be involving the grass tussocks over here to the front, to the front, these nice stones, and then the trees in the back. And I don't want a lot of space, empty space. You can see from where I'm standing how much empty space there is of the sand between here and there. So I've chosen a lower angle that's going to kind of bring the foreground closer to the background. I'm also going to have to focus stack this because of the distance between the grass, which is like four feet in front of the camera, and the trees, which are several hundred yards away. So my first image, I'm going to, the first exposure, I'm going to focus on that front grass right there. Second tussock of grass right there. And the background trees there. All right, my settings, which I didn't mention at the beginning of this clip, were ISO 100, F14, 1 50th of a second, and the camera is zoomed out to about, well, it's 24 millimeters, but even so I'm, so I'm zoomed out all the way. So you, I'm going to take a few more variations of this. You can see there are people now crossing, you know, just walk by, and I might actually let some of them get in the shot to lend a sense of both scale and environment. So... I'll take a few more variations of this image, of this composition, as you say, and your final image, you're going to see right here. So I've come around the bend on the shoreline from the uh, line of trees that you saw in the last composition. And behind me, I have a composition, composition that I've already shot. And the reason I've already shot it is because I've been here for about an hour. And dummy me, while I was uh, doing multiple takes of taking the image, uh, I set up so quickly because I was worried about the tide coming in and ruining the composition that I forgot to plug in my mics. So basically what I have here and what I've already shot is this large boulder that's right uh, behind me to my right. Um, you see the uh, two boulders back there and then the, the bluff with the, with the forest on top of it. And uh, the composition basically is, well, I think it's going to be very nice. The fact that I've also got some nice ripples here. If I was, I was standing in a, in a position with the ripples in the sand coming right at me. The problem that I had lining this up, number one, of course, is the depth of field which meant taking have to do a focus stack. Number two, um, I didn't really want the waves to, to be shown as waves uh, per se, especially since I was going to have to focus stack. So I wanted, so I wanted doing a, a long exposure and putting on a six stop ND filter to blur out the waves. Now, the other problem that I had was the sun. Right now the sun is, is on me, but if you can see in the background, there's you know, a good amount of clouds. In fact, when I was shooting before, there was a good amount of cloud cover and the tide was coming in and out. So as I was doing my sets of stacks from one shot to the other, because I was doing exposures between four to six seconds, um, the light was totally different. I had to do set after set after set of exposures. And I'm probably gonna, I'm pro once I get home, I'm gonna have to see which ones match up the best in terms of lighting, because I wanted to make sure the, light, the, the stand was lit, the rocks were lit, the background was lit, and it was very, Tough time waiting for all things things to happen, especially with long exposures, having to having to uh, wait for everything to be lit up at the same time. In fact, that didn't really happen, so I had to I take a shot, wait two minutes, take another shot, wait two minutes, take a third shot. So whatever I wind up putting together, you're gonna see coming up. I think it's gonna be pretty decent, but it's gonna be very interesting trying to edit all these shots. So here we go. So it's now, you know, three something in the afternoon. I'm going to end the video with this composition that's lined up right behind me. 
it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Basically, you got these two trees that are very nicely isolated against the dark background of the, of the trees behind them, the field in front of them, and uh, the sky up above, which you can see, which is clouded up uh, significantly. Uh, that's kind of both good and bad because it cuts out a lot of the harsh, the harsh highlights, but then they had to wait for the sun to poke out and uh, really kind of light those trees up. I've already seen it happen a couple of times since, since I was uh, approaching the scene and uh, setting up. So I'm going to get back behind my other camera and uh, basically wait for the light to really pop and then we'll, I'll give you the settings and uh, we'll take the shot and then we'll get out of here. Now most of the time I use a two second timer but in this case since the light is going to be very fleeting I'm going to have to time my exposure exactly as possible so I'm going to use my uh, remote shutter release. So just a matter now of just waiting for the light to pop and when it does I'll take a shot. In fact, I'm going to bracket these. I'm going to take it like a five shot bracket sequence. Two stops over, two stops under. And just as soon as the light pops out, I'll take the shot. And then I'll probably have, uh, not probably, I'm more than likely going to have to blend them in Photoshop, but hopefully at least I have a, a set of shots to, to choose from. And uh, we'll see what we get. So you're going to see that right now. All right, folks. That's going to make an episode. It's been a long and fruitful day. It's now like five o'clock in the afternoon. I've got a time lapse running on my other camera. And as soon as that finishes, I'm going to head on out of here. I hope you like what you're seeing. And if you want to see more, give me a subscription. And hit that notification bell that's right down there. And give me a like and a comment. Any interaction I have with you will tell YouTube that my content is interesting to folks and will help other people to see it. And it will really help my channel to grow. So thanks for everything. And until the next time I see you, stay safe, be well, and I'll see you next time. Bye.